What is up YouTube? Kato here and today I'm playing some cards. Get in on it. Welcome back to the vlog. Before we get started, I did a heads up match versus Greg Goes All In. By far the funniest guy in poker right now. Make sure you click on the link in the screen to see it. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do to Greg because he is bringing funny content, great poker content all the time to YouTube. Let's get started. The first hand we played is Ace of Diamonds, Five of Hearts on the button. It folds around to me, and of course, I have a very wide opening range on the button, and especially with an Ace on my hand, I'm going to bump it up to $15. The small blind folds, and the big blind makes the call. We are going to a flop heads up with $31 in the pot. The flop comes out two of clubs, six of clubs, five of spades. I've hit middle pair, and when the opponent checks me, I decide to continue betting. I bet another $15, and the opponent quickly calls. I've played with this opponent a handful of times, and he's one of the better players in the room. Luckily for us, I turned the ace of spades, and my opponent checks me again. So this time, I'm going to be sizing up, trying to get a little bit of value. I've bet a half pot bet of $30, and my opponent thinks about it for a little bit, and he again decides to put in the call. We're headed to the river with $121 in the pot. The dealer puts out the seven of spades, bringing in the backdoor flush draw. The 3-4, of course, would have flopped a straight, and so it was only a gut shot straight draw that would have been hit as well. When it checks me on the river, I decide to bet half pot for value, targeting any ace, any two pair, and my opponent thinks about it for a bit and folds away. We've scooped the first hand of the session, but it won't be the last. We're sitting with $263 in our stack, and the next hand that we look at is ace of clubs, king of hearts, and the big blind. Under the gun and under the gun plus one both limp in, and it folds around to the big blind who bets $10. Playing out of position with a premium hand, I'm definitely going to be putting in a three bet, and I decide on $35. I'm looking to both build the pot and isolate down to one player in order to play heads up. The under the gun player folds and the under the gun plus one makes the call. The original razor also makes the call. We're going three ways to a flop with $109 in the pot and I'm in the worst position of the three. I find ace king especially offsuit a very difficult hand to play but the dealer does us right when he puts out the king of spades, 10 of clubs, and six of hearts. There is a little bit of connectivity on this flop with a few straight draw possibilities and out of position with a decent sized pot already against two players. I'm just gonna continue betting, protecting my hand and trying to build the pot. Both players fold, I'm relieved, playing ace king out of position is especially scary and so I'm glad to be scooping another decent sized pot. We're sitting pretty with $332 and the next hand that we look at is king 10 of spades from the cutoff. The middle position player bets $15, the low jack makes the call and I make the call as well. This is certainly a spot where I could squeeze and put in the three bet but with king 10, a marginal broadway hand, I decide to just make the call and the big blind makes the call as well. We're going four ways to a flop with $61 in the pot and I have the best position. The dealer puts out the 10 of hearts, seven of clubs, and three of spades on the board. This is a fantastic flop for us. It's not very connected. We have top pair with second best kicker. We're likely ahead and when it checks around to me, I decide to put in a two thirds pot size bet, $40, trying to thin the field. I don't want anyone to catch up. The big blind folds and the original razor makes the call. The low jack makes the call as well and we're headed to the turn with $181 in the pot. It's growing quickly. Let's hope for a king, a 10, a spade, or a blank. Nope, we get the seven of diamonds pairing the board, not the card I wanted to see. There could definitely be snakes in the grass with a seven. So when it checks to me, I check back looking to pot control. The river is the queen of diamonds. It's not the worst card in the world because I don't see any queens really getting to the river unless it's queen 10 or maybe queen jack of hearts, clubs, or spades. But when the low jack bets $75, I'm put to the test. I only have to be right in this situation one out of every three times. It is slightly a cause of concern that there's a player behind me, but he was the preflop raiser, so I don't see many sevens in his hand. The low jack, however, could easily have eight sevens suited, nine sevens suited, six sevens suited, and checked to me on the turn, hoping that I would bet again. So I think that this may be a really nitty fold. He polarized himself with this bet, and he could totally be bluffing, maybe something like eight, nine, but... I decide to make the fold. Let me know in the comments below what you think I should have done, if this was the right decision, or if I'm just being a total nit. The next hand I look at is king eight of diamonds in the big blind. The low jack opens the action for $13, the button makes the call, and I also defend with my suited king. We're headed to the flop three ways with $40 in the pot, and it smacks me square in the face with king of hearts, four of diamonds, 10 of diamonds. I flop top pair and a second nut flush draw. This is definitely a hand that I'm ready to play with. The original razor bets $35 from the low jack. The button makes the fold and right out of the gate, I think this is a perfect opportunity to do a check raise. So I decide to make it $90 to call. To my surprise, the low jack rips it all in for another $192. And this is probably the best flop possible for this hand. And so I'm definitely gonna be making the call. $549 in the pot, we're going to a turn. And I spike the queen of diamonds, giving me the flush and a royal flush draw. The river is the five of hearts. 
She shows pocket fours and I show the second nut flush. She had me right where she wanted me on the flop. I was lucky to spike my flush on the turn and dodge the full house outs on the river. Finally, after a long session, I scooped a big one. I've tripled my original buy-in. I'm looking down at a beautiful stack of $605 and the next hand I get is pocket tens from the small blind. The middle position player bets $15. The cutoff makes a call. Now I know that with my pocket tens, I should be three betting here. At the time when I played this hand, I wasn't aware of this. I was playing it like a middle pair, just trying to set mine. And so I make the call as well. We're going three ways to the flop with $48 in the pot. I'm looking to spike a 10 on the flop or at least keep the board low. When it comes out jack of spades, three of clubs, two of hearts, I've kind of gotten what I wanted, not completely. I'm checking basically 100% of my range of this position. It checks around and the turn comes out the five of hearts. I'm not checking this time. I want to take initiative and control the pot. I bet $20, the original pre-flop better folds and the cutoff makes the call. We're growing heads up to the river with $88 in the pot and the dealer puts out the six of spades. This is not the card I wanted to see. It's now a four liner to the straight, but the odds that my opponent has a four are slim. Regardless, he could still have me beat. He could have a jack, he could have a four. And so I decided to take the passive line and check. My opponent wastes no time firing out about a pot sized bet of $75. And now I've put to the test. He's made quite the polarizing bet. He's telling me he either has a four or nothing. I think about it for a little while and I decide I'm going to make the hero call. I toss in a single chip. Remember last episode I said that usually means you're making a reluctant call. And in this case I was, and it was the wrong call. The opponent reveals his hand. He has eight, four of diamonds. He did hit his runner runner for the straight. And so I'm shipping a decent stack to him, unfortunately. On to the next one. The next hand we look at is queen of diamonds, jack of hearts from middle position. The under the gun player makes the call. I also limp in, which I understand is terrible. Berate me in the comments if you will. And the cutoff also makes the call. We're going to the flop four ways with $13 in the pot. And instead of punishing me, the poker gods decide to reward me. With a beautiful 10 of clubs, nine of diamonds, eight of hearts, we flopped the nut straight draw on a rainbow board. It can't get any better than this or can it? The action checks around and the cutoff bets $10 and the big blind raises to $30. The under the gun player makes the call and I could raise here, but my hand is so safe and concealed that I decide to just flat call. The only problem with flopping a straight is your hand cannot improve and plenty of other players' hands could. You could make the argument for raising, but I just decide to make the call. The cutoff calls as well. We're headed to the turn. Four players still in the pot with $133. The turn is the 10 of diamonds pairing the board, not the card I wanted to see. 10, 9, 10, 8, pocket 9s, pocket 8s have all jumped in the lead and there's no way to retake them. To make matters worse, the player who re-raised on the flop now bets into everyone $75. It's getting serious. I of course make the call and the other players in the hand fold around. We're headed to the river heads up with $283 in the pot. Once again, no card can improve my hand. It can only make it worse. And I do get one of the worst in the form of the ace of spades. Now ace 10 beats me, which is a perfectly reasonable hand to have. And my opponent wastes no time betting into me again, $150 this time. It is a serious bet from a serious player. And although I am not holding the nuts, I don't think this is there's much to think about on this one. I just have to pucker at my bum and make the call. Luckily, my opponent says any pair is good. I flip over my hand and drag the pot. I know, I know, you want to see the hand, and I'm very sorry for flipping mine up first. I fix this problem in future vlogs. I just say, I've got 5,000 people that really want to know what you have. Can you please show? And usually they do. I fold around for another 40 minutes, and I decide, I'm just going to take the win. I've been here for about eight hours, although it doesn't probably seem like it in the vlog because I played such few hands. I rack up my chips, and I head to the cage. I do not know how I'm going to make this into a vlog. I literally, the entire time, which is like six hours, played three hands past the flop. But sometimes three good hands is all you need. In for 200, out for 832-ish. So that's a profit of 632. 